So it's estimated that the sum of mankind's knowledge had doubled between the 1900s and 1950s. And then it doubled again in the 1970s, and then again in the 1980s, and they say it doubled again by 1985. There is a powerful momentum in the mass consciousness towards the mind and the analytical process. So the brain must be dominant, right? Uh, no. Each organ in the human body has its own electromagnetic field the heart and brain included, with a field 5,000 times greater in size and 60 times greater in amplitude or strength, we're not giving the heart quite enough credit here. The heart is actually the first organ in a fetus to develop, and the heart begins to beat before the neurological system or the brain is even fully developed. Science is just starting to tell us what the spiritual texts have been telling us for millennia, that the heart is actually the most important part of the human experience. It's been found that the heart and solar plex region actually contain neurons, just like the brain, and the heart itself houses over 40,000 neurons. They've shown that the heart not only thinks, but can learn, remember, and make independent decisions. The heart actually assists with our sensory experience and emotional processing, and it sends more signals out than it receives. When humans are functioning optimally from a place of love, they are actually operating in a state of brain-heart coherence, meaning that the brain's waves sync up with the heart's beat, its pattern of rhythm. So factors like duress, stress, depression, loneliness, and even just being too analytically oriented can have a huge impact on this coherence and it can send us into a very unbalanced state. So what are the signs that you are in a brain-heart coherent state? And how do you restore it, especially if you are experiencing things like depression, grief, loneliness, etc.? Now, this information is particularly important to empaths, highly sensitive people, to intuitives or the feely people, as I call them. And I'm going to explain why. Plus, I'm going to discuss a few external factors that might be influencing your state of coherence that you haven't heard before. Just for fun, I looked up the synonyms of coherence, but then I looked up the antonyms or opposites of coherence. That's when it got interesting. Difference, disagreement, incoherence, nonsense, and my favorite, unintelligibility. Does that not really describe the state of our world right now? But all we can really do is focus on getting our own selves back into a state of coherence. And the more of us that do, the greater the impact that we have on this world in helping the mass consciousness shift into a state of brain-heart coherence. So in a study done by the HeartMath Institute, participants were shown a series of images that would either like elicit this calm state or a strong emotional reaction. And what they found is the heart actually responded first. And it responded about 4.8 seconds before the image actually showed on the screen. In another study in Cambridge, England in like 2011, participants wearing heart monitors were given a card game to play, but they weren't told how to win the game. They had to just go on their hunches. I love these studies. So all the participants stated that they did have to rely on their intuition in order to win, but there was a large variance in how quickly they came to learn how to win the game. And what they discovered 
was that the participants who were aware of their own heartbeat actually had better gut feelings. So the moral of the story is those who listen to their hearts make better life choices. The heart's field is actually out here reading the world around us, including the fields of other people. So not only are we communicating with the world around us, we are actually influencing everyone and everything. So this is where the empaths, highly sensitive or feely souls enter the picture. Now if you're wondering if you are an I, E, H, S or F, S, the answer is yes. You wouldn't be watching this video if you weren't. Now I know that many of you feel like being empaths or highly sensitive is more of a curse than a blessing. But I assure you, that is not the case. Because the way that I see it and understand it is that we are like the heart's equivalent of a super genius. I kind of liken it to musical prodigies, you know, where any one of us can sit down and hammer away at learning how to play the piano. There are just these prodigies who seem to know how to play music. They learn it by osmosis. And that's very similar to coherence and those who are empaths, highly sensitive, intuitives, and feelies. So the empaths, highly sensitive, spiritual folk are much more naturally attuned to their hearts. And they come into coherence with the environment and other people much more easily and naturally than the normies. But the problem is, is that this gift does not discriminate or discern who or what it's going to hook up with. It's difficult to be of aid and service if you aren't able to easily connect in a coherent way with the world and people around you. Let me put it this way. In this study of mothers and newborn infants, they found that the mother's brain waves actually fall into coherence with the baby's heartbeat. And this is what empaths and highly sensitives do. They fall into a coherent state or flow with the environment and people around them. Okay, so there was this really amazing thing that the HeartMath Institute did. And they took this young boy and his dog, Mabel, and put them in a room. Now the protocol was he wasn't to touch the dog or pet it or talk to it. He was just to sit and bring himself into a state of heart coherence by thinking loving thoughts towards the dog. And what happened is that Mabel's heartbeat began to respond. And her rhythm, actually, the more coherent the boy became, the more coherent Mabel came within herself. So we do actually have a very strong impact on the people and things around us from our own state of being. So when I say you're here to be in service, a large part of that service is to affect the coherence of others in a positive and beneficial way. It's just that a lot of us haven't learned how to wield our superpower yet. So just like the fabled superheroes, we go through these trials and tribulations learning how to use our powers. And by that, I'm referring to the high number of E's, HS's, um, feelies, etc., who tend to draw in narcissistic types. And again, from what I understand from them, this is because that personality type senses that you are geared for easy coherence. And they also sense that you are not empowered in it yet, which makes them the dominant energy and you end up in a coherent state with them and you're 
hooked in. Now, there is a whole lot more going on than just what I've explained here with that situation, but that's for future videos. For now, it's just important that you understand that what you have is a gift, and as you learn to wield your gift, that scenario is going to change, okay? You see, as you become conscious of functioning within this brain-heart coherent state, you are, in essence, fortifying your energy, and you are coming into a powerful force of the heart where the brain, heart, and soul are all working together. And that will make you the dominant energy in the way you were intended to be. See, one of the natural laws of the universe is that the strongest energy wins. So as you get your brain under the reins of your heart, not only are you empowered, but you are healing some of these deeper wounds and you won't be attracted to that type in the first place. And the more you make that a part of your foundation, the more solid you are in maintaining and being in that state at all times. So I've put together a list to give you an idea of the signs of when you're in coherence. So this is only a short list. I know that there's probably many other things we could add to this, but this is just like the most important one or the biggest signs that you'll see. Thinking that is more we oriented than me. A desire and ability to forgive both yourself and others. Increased feelings of love, compassion, and inner peace. A deepened sense of belonging, of being a part of something much greater than yourself. A desire to help others. An increased desire for emotional intimacy, not only with others, but with yourself. A decreased reactionary or stress response. And the ability to return back to a calm state quickly after stress. Increased intuition, especially in a practical, everyday sort of way. A natural response of gratitude and appreciation, even for the smallest of things. So I don't want to get all negative Nelly here, but there are some external factors that can influence your state of heartbrain coherence. And a big one is our music. Traditionally or historically, our music was always tuned to 432 hertz which coincidentally is a heart frequency. And coincidentally, the Pyramid of Giza is tuned to as well. But that changed in the 1930s, and the attunement of our music was changed to 440 hertz. Research was conducted on grants from the Rockefeller Foundation, which determined that 440 hertz was good at making people work harder and fostered personality traits that were more devoid of emotions. So the Rockefeller Foundation had a vested interest in ensuring that the U.S. adopted this 440 hertz standard which then became a global standard of tunement for music. Seems clear why these traits were desirable to the Third Reich. Mm-hmm. So the propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels, insisted on 440 Hertz in Germany because he believed it made people think and feel in specific ways making them a prisoner of a certain consciousness. And if you're trying to mobilize the masses for the de fior, it's a good way to go, right? See, the problem is that 440 hertz is a very unnatural frequency. It's like banging a gong, boom, 
and the vibrations coming out and smashing into this heart coherence field. Dr. Leonard Horowitz said, the music industry features this imposed frequency that is herding populations into greater aggression, social agitation, and emotional distress, predisposing people to physical illness. So without going too far down this rabbit hole, it's just important that you are aware of what's happening in our music so that you can make better informed choices for yourself. Now, if you are working on heart frequency, um, heart brain coherence, I strongly suggest you look into um, Schumann resonance or esophageal frequencies because they are like tuning for the human biology. They put us back into our natural frequency, field, state, etc. And there's lots on YouTube. There is a lot of science coming out and there are so many techniques and things we need to learn and how to get in alignment and how to get in your vortex and how to get in your blah 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 blah. blah. But few people are actually talking about real life applications of these things because the fact of the matter is life isn't always simple and it's not always easy to access states of love, peace, joy, gratitude when you are experiencing things like depression, grief, loneliness and that sort of thing. The other factor of maybe right now things are going good in your life and you can tap into it but every time you go to come into these feelings you're kind of stopped and blocked by these old emotional wounds that are sitting there. So that's really important for us to address so that we can get empowered in what we're doing. See what happens is we go to sit down and do some of these practices and we're like, be love, okay, love. And you can't settle anything inside of yourself. And okay, no, ugh, ah, and you're hurting. And then you're like, no, feel love, feel love, damn it, feel the love. So what happens is when we sit down in practice, it can be really difficult to access these feelings. We can end up feeling like there's something wrong with us. Like why can't I just be normal like everyone else and feel all these good feelings? Or we beat ourselves up for feeling somehow inadequate. Or worse, we just try to fake it. I am love. I am love. I am love. And meanwhile you're breaking inside, right? But you can't fake it. You know, the heart knows there's a thing called lie detectors based on our heart and physiological response to speaking things that are not true, right? So it's not about faking it. This is about us learning how to come into that place authentically. Okay, so why does it happen though? Why doesn't that damn heart just get on board? Well, let's go back to the fact that the heart has 40,000 neurons. It remembers and it can make independent functional decisions. Yeah, story time. So there was an eight-year-old little girl who received the heart of a 10-year-old who had been murdered. And not long after, she began to have these reoccurring nightmares and the parents were beside themselves. So they took her to a psychiatrist. Well, after speaking to the little girl, the psychiatrist felt that this young child was actually recalling a real life incident. And with all the details that the little girl provided, including a sketch for a police artist, they actually ended up arresting and convicting the young girl's killer. That's why you can't just plow through your heart with what your brain wants, right? But make no mistake, your heart, it wants to heal. It's what brought you to this video today. It's about fostering this heart-brain connection. 
growing it, loving yourself and nurturing yourself back to your natural state of being. And all it is is getting the brain waves to fall into pattern with the heart's beats. So we are going to do the simplified version of the heart breathing. Now I do have a more in-depth version that I use in my daily practice, but for time's sake, we're gonna do this simplified version that you can do anywhere at any time. So I do just need to add this. Uh, 15 years ago, long before there was ever any studies or talk about co heart coherence and the internet was just an infant, information wasn't available like it is today, I had a profound spiritual experience. And through that experience, I ended up hearing beings talking to me. And for months, they trained me and taught me how to heal myself of a lifelong depression, chronic depression, and to reawaken myself into my intuition. And so what I'm sharing with you in the heart breathing is the technique that they shared with me. I do have another version of the heart breathing that I use in my intuitive development classes, so I will link that for you. So to get started, we need a anchor image. And by that I mean, we need a, a mental image or idea that we can lock onto while we're doing the meditation. So for this, um, it's something that it evokes these feelings that make you feel good that evoke that sense of love or compassion, right? Or even just joy and peace. I'm gonna suggest that you stay away from the mental image or idea of anyone who is an adult and anyone that you are, are in any sort of relationship with because the heart has memory. And so if so-and-so did this back then, or da-da-da, that could come up and we don't want anything personal coming up we want to keep this nice and clean okay so if you need to just pause the video and then we will get into this really simple beautiful quickie meditation so let's do this mini meditation okay so we're not going deep 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 this is something you can do anywhere right but for today just so you're learning it is good to kind of get some space from everything and everyone and have your own time here. So just let yourself settle wherever you're sitting. Just to take a moment to arrive into your body, into the room, and into this moment. And as you sit, become aware of your heart and if you'd like, you can put your fingers or your whole palm over your heart, just bringing your mental focus down into that area. And welcome any feelings that you may feel. And even if it's just still and quiet, Just give whatever your experience is a space to be, just as it is, lovingly. And as you sit here, becoming aware of your heart, also become aware of your breath. Just noticing it, allowing yourself to breathe more deeply, more from your belly so that your breath deepens without too much effort. Just gentle, easy breaths in and out. In and out. Very nice. And while you remain aware of your breath, 
in the background, recall that mental image or idea and just notice where in your body you experience the feelings. How do you feel the feeling of love in your body? Notice the energy of it. Holding that idea or image. Just allow the energy or tingling or waves or just good feelings to spread throughout your entire body. And even imagine it in the air around you. And if you don't feel it, it's perfectly okay. Just visualize it as energy or light. Just visualize it as energy or even light all around you. That's perfect. Now while in that energy, imagine now that the air begins to move through your heart center instead of your mouth or nose, that it is your heart that is breathing. Beautiful, easy inhales, breathing in through your heart, breathing in And as you exhale, it's moving out from your heart. All the energy of love is moving in and out with these breaths. And as you inhale, you're inhaling all this love and good feelings and light and energy. And as you exhale, all that love and energy comes out through your heart and fills the room. Inhaling love and exhaling love. The more you breathe, the more love is generated. Just feeling, noticing. You are the source of love that you breathe. And you are the source of love you share back out into the world with every heart breath. And the longer you breathe, the more love that is generated, the more love that is filled inside of you, and the more love you breathe back out into the room around you, and even the world around you. So when you're ready, I'm going to ask you to just open your eyes. Hi. Now, like I said, that is the simplified version, but once you do it a couple times, you will begin to acclimate. And it's important that you aren't forcing these feelings of love, but that you're generating it through the ideas or images. Now, you may notice at times that other images might come into your mind and try to barricade you or other emotions show up in the heart area 
And if that happens, it's not about trying to override anything. That it's important that if you start to experience feelings, other than that, you can just hold the intention of the love that you're feeling, but allow the feeling of that emotion that you experience to be, give it the space, because that's your heart's innate wisdom saying, this is the time that we need to be with this old wound or hurt and it's about staying out of any story of what your mind has in relation to this and just feeling breathing with it and the longer that you sit breathing with it the more you're actually healing it because you're giving it space to be you're bringing it into the light and into awareness and that is how our heart heals Okay. Now, this is something that you can do every day, and like I said, I do have a longer version. That longer version meditation, I'm going to have to see about getting that up here for you guys, or maybe doing some sort of group meditation or something. True heart-brain coherence is our natural state, but it takes time to get readjusted so that we are in this state more of the time than not. Okay, so in the beginning, you'll be falling in and out of it, and that's normal and it's okay. But the more that you foster it, the more that you focus on it, the more that it grows, the more solid and fortified you are in this strong, coherent state. So there are some things that you can do in the day besides the meditation, because this needs to be like a life practice, a way of being. So there's three things. The first one is to look for the love. And that is wherever you are in the day, out in the world, whether it's noticing this one little flower, you know, blooming up out of the crack of the sidewalk, or, you know, a cashier smiling at a little girl. It's just about getting your mind into that place of looking for the love that you see out in the world with people, animal, nature, anywhere in your environment. The second one is to feel the love. So that is when you're noticing these ideas of love out here in the world is to go, okay, where do I feel that? How does it feel in me, right? And sometimes it will evoke these beautiful feelings and then sometimes it'll evoke some old hurts and it's not about crushing that hurt away it's just going ah I see this tender spot so I'm gonna let that love kind of come in here and fill it and I'm gonna coddle it and nurture it but but it's very important that you begin to become aware of how you feel these feelings of love and compassion that you are seeing and experiencing out in the world so number three is be the love and that means in ways big or small whatever way you can think of that is some small act of love or a big act of love out here for other people or the world at large whether that's just as a person walks by you're internally saying thank you and sending out that heart wave or you just notice a piece of litter and you pick it up and throw it in the bin you know that's an act of love and so with these three it's like looking for the love feeling the love and being the love and that will bring you so into alignment and into your heart and this world needs you and it needs the love that you have I want to thank you so much for being here as always I am sending you my love and I look forward to seeing you very soon.